Welcome to Hawaii, one of the world's most beautiful places for nature and wildlife. One of the most important things about Hawaii is its oceans. Many people don't really appreciate the full extent of the oceans beyond the coral reefs, but beyond them is an open ocean full of creatures and wildlife. Welcome to Hawaii. Open Oceans, the Pacific Ocean. The open ocean is the largest biome on Earth. It is found all over the world. It consists of many different aquatic ecosystems linked together. They vary in depth of water, average temperature, and amount of sunlight. The Pacific Ocean is a great example of this biome, as is the largest ocean in the world, consisting of many fascinating species and communities. The 10% rule is the concept that 10% of energy is transferred through trophic levels. We can see this in an aquatic ecosystem food web. The producers begin with 1,500 kcals of energy. Within this trophic level, we can see dinoflagellate, seaweed, and diatoms. Dinoflagellates and diatoms are both a type of phytoplankton that are crucial to this ecosystem. They are known as the keystone species. In the next trophic level, only 150 kcals of energy were transferred. This trophic level consists of shrimp, clams, and krill. In the next trophic level, the secondary consumers, 15 kcals of energy were transferred. This trophic level consists of octopus, squid, and jellyfish. In the top trophic level, the tertiary consumers, 1.5 kcals of energy were transferred. These consumers consist of sharks, dolphins, and orca whales. One very fascinating native species to the Pacific Ocean is Calpera taxfolia, better known as green algae. They contain gas-filled structures called floats that keep them on the surface so they can keep up with photosynthesis. They're an R-selected species as they reproduce very quickly and have a very short lifespan. Another fascinating species, Gallio cerdo cuvier, better known as tiger sharks, have adapted precise ridges on their teeth so that they can efficiently tear apart prey. This is a case-selected species because they don't have many offspring and they are slow-growing. In this clip, you can just see how efficiently tiger sharks eat their prey. One of the most famous characteristics of the ocean is its many relationships between its community organisms. One of the most common examples, a mutualistic relationship, is between the cleaner shrimp, Lismata and Bonissus, and the moray eel, Marinidae. This relationship is mutualistic because both of the organisms benefit. There are literal cleaning stations in the oceans where fish and moray eels line up to get rid of parasites and dead cells. The shrimp, in turn, get an unlimited food supply, while the moray eel gets a free cleaning. Another famous example of mutualistic relations is between the pistol shrimp alpha day and the goby goba day. As the pistol shrimp burrows for food in the sand, the goby is given a safe place to hide and lay eggs in the burrow. In turn, because the shrimp is blind, the goby warns it of predators while it is burrowing in the sand. One of the more scary relationships found in our oceans is between the isopod isopoda and the clownfish amphiprionidae. This relationship is entirely parasitic. The isopod inserts itself into the fish's mouth, first eating the fish's tongue and taking its place, then getting the first bite of whatever the fish eats. The last example of a community relationship is a commensalistic example. This is between the imperial shrimps, palamonidae, and sea cucumbers, holothuridae. This is commensalism. The imperial shrimp will hop off the back of sea cucumbers and ride to the next feeding destination. Then, when they're done with the food there, they will hop back on the sea cucumber and go to the next feeding destination. This, however, has no impact on the sea cucumber. Another example of relationships involves competition among many of the types of predators in the Pacific Ocean. Around Hawaii, there are several types of sharks. S specific ones that we'll look at today are the gray reef shark and the sandbar shark. These animals have the same niche, or the same diet, therefore they compete. This is where the competitive exclusion principle comes in. This principle states that two predatory species competing for the same resource cannot coexist. Research in Hawaii shows that these two species of sharks, although they have the same diet, they both exist in Hawaii. However, one species is prevalent on the North Islands, while the other occupies the South Islands, showing their separate niches. 
They could not co- coexist together, so they had to separate to where they could still have the same resources but not have to compete with one another. Although of the, although there is a lot of unique diversity among the organisms in the Pacific Ocean, there are several endangered species. The narwhal, Monodon monoceros, the North Atlantic right whale, Eubalaena glacialis, the whale shark, Rhynchidon typus, and the southern rockhopper penguin, Eudiptus chrysocom. Many other animals are also common in the Pacific Ocean. Many of these, unfortunately, are invasive. An invasive species is one that is not native to the area, but when it is introduced, it is believed to multiply to the point of damage to native species. One of the famous invasive species in Hawaii is Cassiopeia andromeda, the upside-down jellyfish. These are thriving in Hawaiian waters and are found all over the beaches, commonly and more commonly today. They have a very poisonous sting and have caused a serious threat to humans. The other one is Cephalopholus argius, the peacock grouper. This fish is also thriving, and it came from somewhere off the East China Sea. Unfortunately, it is competing with some of the native fish species and is beginning to eliminate them. Some abiotic factors that affect our biome are sunlight, temperature, and the salinity of water. Most ocean organisms need very specific water temperatures in order to grow, survive, and reproduce. Temperature also affects where organisms live in the ocean. Most ocean organisms are adapted to live in specific salinity levels. A main issue that the Pacific Ocean is going through is pollution such as sewage, runoff from land, and toxic waste. People are leaving trash on the beaches and will eventually go into the ocean and cause animals to die. A lot of animals, such as turtles, are dying from straws. So there has been a campaign to save the turtles. People will say no to plastic straws at restaurants and even bring their own metal straws to restaurants. Another similar issue is the amount of plastic in oceans. Many animals are getting tangled up in the plastic or even eat the plastic. From the animal's eyes, they see plastic as jellyfish, and so seeing clear plastic can be very confusing to animals. People are seeing how we are destroying the ocean and the animals and are trying to fix this issue. People have stopped bringing plastics to the beach. Another easy way to stop having plastic into the ocean is having plastic companies make the plastic healthy for animals to eat or even to dissolve in the ocean in a healthy way. As time goes on, companies are expanding and needing more resources. As the economy gets bigger, more problems arise and the government isn't doing anything about it. Companies are building more factories and waste can run off into the ocean, which can cause animals to die. Also, this leads to more trading, which results to more ships into the ocean. Having more ships into the ocean can lead to more pollution and dumping more waste into the ocean. The open ocean is beautiful. Its plant life and animals are amazing. We should help to preserve this amazing habitat and always remember it.